that is so key in this world today because today you, got a lot, you have a lot of deception that's going on and you need to know God's voice. All right, here's what it says in uh, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27. The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. What do we say that word candle? Lamp, light, okay? So what this is saying is that God is going to use your spirit to guide you. All right? Now, when we say that, we have to understand and be spiritually minded. Now, please take this out of the religious and put it in the righteous context. We have to be spiritually minded. He is saying for us to seek guidance from God. And if we're going to seek guidance from God, God is a spirit. And he guides us by our spirit. Okay. Now, <clears throat> spiritually minded. Turn to Revelation, please. Revelation chapter 21. This is a key to hearing the voice of God. To be spiritually minded. Be more conscious of the spirit. Normally, we're not. Just in general, it's carnally minded. It's mindful of the flesh. But there, the way that you enter into the best of God is that you have to be spiritually minded. All of this helps you to cross over and get into the spirit. Because that's where you're going to have dominion, not in the flesh. And this is key for all of us. And that's why uh, many times the saints of God are not experiencing the blessing of God because it takes spiritual mindedness. Let's go to another place. Now we're building in spiritual mindedness. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, please, and chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Now, remember when Paul said it, and I think he said it over in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he said, as long as there are factions and, and strife and divisions, are you not all carnal and walk as mere men? Isn't that a trick of the enemy to try to keep us in strife, to try to keep us in division? We try to keep us, us separate as a church. I'm talking about the entire church. Now I'm talking about denomination. Isn't that just a trick of the devil to try to get us? You got this. I don't have that. You have that. So forth and so on. To keep people in a carnal way so that they can't get over in the spirit and subdue him. Keep them involved with issues. Majoring on the minors. So now, look over here at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Have you got it? Verse 16. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man does what? Perish. Yet our, come on, inward man is renewed day by day. Now, isn't this interesting? An inward man. There is a man in there. Well, I'm a woman. It says there's a man in there. You get it? Woo man. So... When you meditate that, now you understand that, wait a minute, though this outward man gets older and, and begins to go on old and so forth and so on, the inward man doesn't age. God has no birthdays. Glory to God. Now let's go to another one here. 
Let's go to, now see how I'm painting a picture, but what's happening is the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper, come on, than a two-headed sword dividing the soul and the spirit. See, it, it's, it's telling you, it's beginning to, to speak to you concerning who the real you is or who the real yous are. I don't know, that's something. All right, now, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. So the enemy does not want you to know who you are. He does not want you to have what is known as God inside mindedness. Glory to God. All right, look what it says in 1 Peter. Now you, listen, I know this is simple. I know some of y'all, well, I know all of that. Well, listen, faith comes how? By hearing. By hearing, not having heard. Look what it says in 1 Peter chapter 1, and look up at verse 3 and 4. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair, wearing of gold, and putting on apparel, but let it be the who? Hidden man, where? Of the heart. So he calls the hidden man the heart. So we're saying that there is a person in there and the person in your flesh is the real you. But there is an outward man that Paul refers to, but there's also an inner man. So what God wants us to be is he wants to be us to be conscious of the inner man because to be carnally minded is death. And when a kind of minded person cannot please God. So apparently now I'm just, I'm feeding your spirit. Now, you know, your mind might be kind of, your intellect might be trying to grab hold of something. But sometimes when you talk in the spirit, the intellect has nothing to grab hold to. So you're just going to have to back off of that and say, I believe I received. <laughs> All right, let's keep going now. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Got it? Verse 17. You know the scripture? Why don't you say it with me? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new... are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Now that word creature there is, one a translation says, new being. That's a New Testament translation. Another translation says new person. That's a Phillips translation, new person altogether. Another translation says new creation. That's Connie Bear's translation. Another translation says new race. Hmm. Hmm. Now, this, this, it's interesting. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because for us to move into the place that God wants us, we've got to have God inside mindedness. We have to have a mindfulness of the spirit that we are spirit. And God said, let us make man what? In our image, after our likeness, and let them have what? Dominion. Now, once you get, become a new creature, you go on down here and he said in verse 21, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made, come on, the righteousness 
of God in him. When we're talking about the righteousness of God, we're talking about the ability to stand in God's presence without any sense of guilt or condemnation or inferiority, to have an absolute freedom in the presence of God. When we're talking about the righteousness of God, we're talking about the very life and the nature of God. Abraham was accounted righteous. He wasn't righteous, he was accounted righteous. But we are the actual righteousness of God. Now, how do we get that way? Through being born again. Not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. But Jesus, who, who he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. So the opposite of that righteousness consciousness is sin consciousness. And when a person has sin consciousness, he, is, he or she are eager to involve themselves in religious activity. See, the, the tendency is that if I do enough work, I'll be all right with God. That is not the way you get righteous with God. That holiness is conduct. Righteousness is nature. And people who have sin consciousness usually have a distorted image of what God really is like. When I say sin consciousness now, they have, been, they have been born again, but they have not received the righteousness of God. They're still trying to be righteous in their own strength and in their own ability. I'm going to keep going now. The people who operate in sin consciousness always seem to suffer spiritual failures. They can't seem to get a prayer through so they're going to ask somebody else to pray for them. I'm not talking about anybody. I'm only saying when God comes into your life, one thing we're going to do is we're going to grow you up. So where you had somebody else always praying for you, now you can pray for somebody else. Sun consciousness, sin consciousness. Two opposites. To hear the voice of God, you need sun consciousness. Now, in sin consciousness, you can hear it probably. But the tendency is, well, we don't have the channel that we have in sun consciousness. Sun consciousness says, I've got fellowship. What did I say to fellowship is? Two fellas in a ship. That's it. No. Jesus referred to God as who? Father. Jesus had no sense of inferiority. Now notice, he was a son. And he was walking like sons ought to walk. He was demonstrating son. Jesus, the son of the living God, came down to earth and became the son of man so that he could make you the son of God. Now, he is showing you how sons of God operate. He said, you're going to cry, and he got, we call it the Lord's Prayer. How does it start? Come on. Abba. See, the whole idea is that there is a relationship that whatever you need, See, father, petta, Greek, provider, bread provider. See, he, he, everything we need, the father can supply. Now, glory to God. 
you know Jesus was spiritually minded because he told them when they came and tried to take him one time, he said, don't you know that if I wanted to, I could call legions of angels. See, he was spiritually, come on, minded. He didn't let himself drop down in the flesh because he couldn't walk on water in the flesh. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't feed 5,000 plus women and children in the flesh. He couldn't call Lazarus from the dead in the flesh. He couldn't lay hands on a leper and not catch leprosy in the flesh. When you have son consciousness, you have no sense of inferiority to leprosy. Leprosy is under you. You are superior to leprosy. It can't come on you unless you want it. Oh, you got to see this. This is the key. Righteousness is a message that has not been preached. It hasn't been preached. And it is the message. Because a lot of people are trying to preach faith without righteousness. You can't do that. The way I walk in the faith that I walk in is because I know I'm in God's class. And I'm telling you, there's a place that we can walk, that we can walk and talk with God again. Because he's restoring everything. Everything that was lost in the fall, God is bringing it back. And you know if you can hear God, you are at peace. Turn, I know you have at something there at, at Luke 15. You know yourself, all you want to do is hear God, don't you? You just want to know, God, what do I do? You know, where do I go? You know, where do I go? Ain't that a song, Catherine? All right, <laughs> Thank you, praise the Lord. All right. Um, if they're going to sing those songs in heaven. Where do I go when there's nobody else around? You know? Okay. Think they're going to be singing those in heaven, Kathy? No, okay. I don't think so either. That's what I'm talking about. We need to change these songs. All right, now. Okay, now let's go to Isaiah chapter 32. Now look at that. See, now what am I doing? I'm dividing your soul and your spirit. I'm letting you know that you're more than, than flesh. You're more than what you can see. You're more than what you've experienced. Hearing the voice of God. This is a very important topic. All right, look what it says in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 17. Have you got it? Have you got it? The work of righteousness shall be... And the effect of righteousness is what? Quietness, come on, and assurance, forever. It's quietness and assurance. The effect of righteousness is what? Quietness and assurance. See, you start dealing with righteousness, I'm telling you, you, you open the doors to some things. I mean, you... You, the, the devil can't do a thing with you when you start dealing with righteousness. Because the thoughts of the righteous are what? They're right. Now suppose you do sin. Come on, see. You have a what? Advocate, come on, with the Father. Who is that? Jesus. Now was he, he, was he, did he go through what, you go th what you're going through? 
Yeah, when he was on earth. Did he go through? Sure he did. So he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. But see, he's the chief shepherd. He's the one that stands before the high court of heaven. And when you do blow it, you have an advocate. Here's what he says. If you confess, come on, your sin, he is faithful and just come on, to forgive you your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Why? He doesn't want one ounce of unrighteousness in you because all unrighteousness is sin. Not one ounce. Act like you never ever sinned in your life. And you will watch, you can hear God like that. You watch your prayers be answered. You cast out demons, they'll come out before you even finish your sentence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The faith just goes sky high. The thing that bogs our faith is sin consciousness. I want you to be spiritually minded. But if you're minded of the flesh, then you'll revisit those things. And every time you rehearse it, you weaken your spirit. So this is a confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So all we have to do is ask, come on, according to his will. Where's the will? Where's the will? Okay, it's the last will and testament. It's what Jesus left for us. If you ask anything according to his will, he's going to hear you. Now, how do you know that? Because he said it. you got confidence. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition we desired of him. Now, righteousness says I don't have to feel it. Well, today is offering day on the broadcast, and we give you, the viewing audience, and our partners and friends and those who are being blessed by the ministry an opportunity to sow a seed. Now, we, of course, take what you've given us, and we support the broadcast and pay for television, all the things that we do. But what I'm saying to you is that it's good soil. It's soil where the word is coming forth, and the Bible talks about four types of soil. One was hard soil, when the Word is sown uh, because it's, the ground is so hard, the birds just come and take it away. Uh, the next is a stony ground. Stony ground is ground that they planted some seed, but when the roots began to try to grow down, they couldn't and because the stones were there. So the heat scorched the plants and it dried up. The next was thorny ground. This is ground that soil has thorns in it. And as the, the, the plants tried to grow, the thorns choked it out. But the last was good soil. And in that good soil, Jesus said it'll come for 30, 60, 100 fold. Now that means that whatever is being sown can come back multiplied. This is God's way of meeting the needs of his people. Somebody might be looking at me and say, well, I'm on fixed income. Unfix it. <laughs> you can do that. God can make it so that that government or that pension, whatever it is, it's not your source. Your source is God. And he says that you do give, it'll be given back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men shall give into your bosom. You see, we've got to come off of that notion that our job is our source or some people are our source, or this government is our source. No, the government of the kingdom is our source. God himself wants to be our source. Now he says this over in Galatians chapter six and verse seven. He says, be not deceived. Now God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. You see, God guarantees us a harvest from our seed. Now look at me. We've been using it ever since I got here. I don't know whether you know the story or not, but we came here with $200. <laughs> Look at what God has done. Sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. So it is not just a promise. It's a covenant. It's God's promise and covenant to you that's saying when you do sow a seed, he then is obligated to measure that back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Now, 
you know, you're trying to make God do something he doesn't want to do? No, no, no. God is the one that came up with the system. He is the one that wants to support his people. So his people don't have, don't have to look to anybody else for support. How would you like your family, your wife, your husband, somebody to look to some other family for their support? Uh-uh, not God. You're going to be supported by him, and he's going to take care of you in style. Praise God. So as you sow your seed, get it ready, and, or just get in mind what you'd like to sow. And we encourage you to sow and expect a miracle. Expect something to happen. You might be sowing it for some debt relief, or it might be sowing it for a friend that needs to come into the kingdom, or it might be sowing it for some sickness or disease needs to be healed. But get, put something in mind. Expect a miracle. Praise God. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, and we do thank you for all of our listening audience and those that are sowing seed into this ministry. We pray, Lord, that your word will prove to be true that you'll measure it back to them, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, men shall give into their bosom, or whatever they have sown this seed for, that you will work a miracle in their lives. Father, we thank you for it. We believe it's done. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise God. Thank you so much for your support of the ministry. Thank you for your prayers. We love you. And until next time, Bill Winston saying, keep walking by faith. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love